117. Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur, Squirtle. Hi, I'm Mads, and what if you use Pokemon for counting? You see, I have dyscalculia. Individuals with dyscalculia find it difficult to comprehend time, numbers, mathematics. It's kind of like dyslexia, just with math. I'd like to explain it like this. Do you see five anywhere? Most people say, yeah, I have five fingers. Yes, you have five fingers, but the symbol of five is nowhere to be found on your hand, unless you tattoo it somewhere. Individual dyscalculia find it difficult to connect the amount because you have five fingers, that's the amount, with the symbol. The symbol is nowhere to be found here. And when you write on paper, you only see the symbol, but not the amount. Very confusing. And this impacts an everyday life of someone with dyscalculia. So, what I did as an experimentation throughout my life, I've done many things. I took something that I already know and already like, Pokemon, and I connected them to something I didn't like, math, numbers. And because I knew all the Pokemon, I could use them as a tool to teach myself new things. So, then the question comes, how to use Pokemon instead of numbers? Why would even, why would you do that? Because that's a motivation to actually wanting to learn mathematics because you use something fundamentally that you have interest in and you like. And using that as a baseline to give yourself more interests or, or more using that as a baseline to actually learn new skills, especially things that you find difficult. Let me show you. Okay, here we have, here we have a list of Pokemon. Obviously, you can do this with anything. You know, this is actually a common technique to remember things. Putting association images onto uh, things you associate with that number. It's a common memorization technique. That's what we that's why we're doing this. You can replace this with anything. I just happen to choose Pokemon because I know Pokemon and as you probably know if you like Pokemon there is a lot of them and since Pokemon is a sort of massive franchise most people have some sort of connection to it but even though there is over thousand Pokemon as of generation 9 we can get quite far using numbers as Pokemon or Pokemon as numbers. However, that means that you need to remember exactly every single Pokemon and where they are placed on the Pokedex. And that's a big, big thing to remember. It's way harder <laughs> than potentially using the symbol of math, the, the normal symbols. So that's why we are only going to use the first 10 Pokemon. Bulbasaur to Caterpie. Or you can choose to choose any Pokemon you like. If you associate uh, Kabuto with, with one, more power to you, you know? But for the sake of this video and for the sake of making it easy for yourself, we're going to use Bulbasaur to Caterpie. And I've made a little list here. It's quite tiny. And here you can see, I've made a little list. Bulbasaur represent one, Ivysaur two, Venusaur three, etc. And we get up to Caterpie, which is number 10. However, if you want to use Caterpie as number 10, you can. I have another solution to you. What if we use Victini instead? 
Because if you know your lore, you will know that in Gen 5, Victini is categorized as Pokemon number zero. Using this will give us zero instead of 10. Meaning I can, in, to write 10, I will write Bulbasaur Victini. And now I can basically write any number with these 10 Pokemon here. Zero to nine. So let's have a look. Now, of course, normally you will go like Sandru, Shelder equals Cedra because that's their actual Pokedex numbers. But again, as we just talked about, remembering every single one and the number they have is, is difficult. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to use this as we already established 0 to 9. And we have 27, which is Ivysaur and Squirtle, plus Blastoise and Victini, which is 9 and 0. It will become 117. Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur, Squirrel. And you will say, well, this is very difficult. How can you even count this way? It's to get association. I would still recommend that you do both of these to again make the foundation that wow i can look at pokemon and i can see i know that squirtle is seven oh cool you know ivysaur squirrel 27. you need to you need to use them in combination this is to have fun to make math fun Especially for someone with this calculia, where this can be very taunting. Have fun. Use what you already know. And only your ma imagination is, is the limit of how far this can go. Again, you can use all the images, all the things. For example, which I will make a future video on. I often associate the number 13 with a Donald Duck car, which I believe is... 313 on the on the license plate but it makes me think about 13 so when i count i i first see an image of the doll duck car when i see 13 i'm like oh yeah i know that number that's a doll duck car good the same thing here oh a squirtle i know what squirtle is it's number seven in the pokedex cool i have a symbol, something familiar, because this, this is not familiar. This is just two symbols that I with this calculia have a negative association with, and it gives me stress and fear based on my trauma with math through school. This is also 27. I love Pokemon. It's great. Wow. You know, make it fun. So I hope this sparked some potential new way of discovering learning. Because learning can be so many things. You can do whatever you technically want with learning. But you don't need to follow the exact formula that everyone is doing. Spice it up, make it safe and have fun learning. Follow for more. If you like what I'm doing here, I plan to make a lot more videos that goes more in depth than just my shorts. I am on every social media. I make art, I make videos about, about dyslexia, dyscalculia, learning differences in general. Also check out my Patreon, check out my website. I have if you want to, especially if you want to contact me, my website is the best place to do that. If you want to have consultations with me, you can find information of where to book that on my website. I do, uh, I help people in all sorts of ways to, to find out how they learn and, and understand how they think. If that's for you, I'm here for you. 
I have loads of art there as well if you're interested in buying some art. And consider watching my animated short movies. Here, for example, here is my movie about dyslexia. And without further ado, thank you again for watching and I see you in the next video.